go. Hello, my name is Ann Manners and I'm going to read Make Way for Ducklings by Robert McClowski. This is a picture of the ducklings. Mr. and Mrs. Mallard were looking for a place to live, but every time Mr. Mallard saw what was looking like a nice place, Mrs. Mallard said it was no good. There were sure to be foxes in the woods or turtles in the water, and she was not going to raise a family where there might be foxes or turtles. So they flew on and on. This picture. When they got to Boston, they felt too tired to fly any further. There was a nice pond in the public garden with a little island on it. The very place to spend the night quacked Mr. Mollard, so down they flapped. There's a picture of them flapping down on the right. And there's the pond on the left with the island. Next morning, they fished for their breakfast in the mud at the bottom of the pond, but they didn't find much. Yeah, looking for their food. Just as they were getting ready to start on their way, a strange, enormous bird came by. It was pushing a boat full of people, and there was a man sitting on its back. Good morning, quacked Mr. Mallard, being polite. The big bird was too proud to answer, but the people on the boat threw peanuts into the water, so the mallards, mallards followed them all around the pond and got another breakfast better than the first. Oh, this boat is full of children and people having a lovely time. There's the swan boat. And the children and the people in it. I like this place, Mrs. Mallard said as they climbed out on the bank and waddled along. Why don't we build a nest and raise our ducklings right in the pond? There are no foxes and no turtles and the people feed us peanuts. What could be better? Good, said Mr. Mallard, delighted that at last Mrs. Mallard had found a place that suited her. But, it's long. Oh, there's some boys on bikes. And look at them talking about it at the other side of the other page. Look out, squawked Mrs. Mallard all of a dither. You'll get run over. And when she got her breath, she added, this is no place for babies with all those hard things rushing about. We'll have to look for somewhere else. Oh my, oh my. There we are. And there's, there they are. Boy, it's going very fast. So they flew over Beacon Hill and round the state house, but there was no place there. On the right, they're flying over Beacon Hill. And on the left, there's the, there are the buildings. They looked in Lewisburg Square, but there was no water to swim in. There they are on the left-hand side flying over. And on the right, there they are on Beacon Hill. Doesn't look very encouraging right now, does it? Then they flew over the Charles River. This is better, quite Mrs. Mr. Mal. The island looks like a nice, quiet place, and it's only a little way from the public garden. Yes, said Mrs. Mallard, remembering the peanuts. That looks just the right place to hatch ducklings. So there they are, flying over. There's a bridge and the water river.
and they chose a cozy spot among the bushes near the water and settled down to build their nets, nest. And only just in time, for now they were beginning to molt. All their old wing feathers started to drop out and they would not be able to fly again until the new ones grew in. And they've got a nice spot there to put their net, build their nest. On the beach. But of course they could swim and one day they swam over to the park on the river bank and there they met a policeman called Michael. Michael fed them peanuts and after that the mallets called on Michael every day. And there they are eating the peanuts and there's Michael. He looks like a very nice policeman. After Mrs. Mallet had laid eight eggs in the nest, she couldn't go to visit Michael anymore because she had to sit on the eggs to keep them warm. She moved off the nest only to get a drink of water or to have a lunch or to count the eggs and make sure they were all there. She's counting the eggs. She's counting the eggs. One day the ducklings hatched out. First came Jack, then Knack, then Lack, then Mac, and Knack, and Quack, and Pack, and Whack. Mr. and Mrs. Mallard were bursting with pride. It was a great responsibility taking care of so many ducklings, and it kept them very busy. We have lots of ducklings now. There's a father duckling. And there's the mother one. And then the babies. I hope you can see it. Probably. There we are. She taught them how to swim and dive. Oh my. And she's teaching them. She taught them to walk in a line, to come when they were called, and to keep a safe distance from bikes and scooters and other things with wheels. So you see Mrs. Mallard, and then you see all the ducklings following along behind her as they should. When at last she felt perfectly satisfied with them, she said one morning, come along children, follow me. Before you could wink an eyelash, Jack, Knack, Lack, Mac, Whack, Knack, Whack, Back, and Quack fell into line, just as they had been taught. Mrs. Mallard led the way into the water and they swam behind her to the opposite bank. Wow, look at that. They are good, aren't they? They're following right behind her. She Then they waddled ashore and, and along until they came to the highway. Oh my. Mrs. Mallet stepped out to cross the street. Hong Kong went the horns on the speeding cars. Went but Mrs. Mallet as she tumbled back. Quack, 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 quack. Went Jack, knack, lack, knack, knack. Quack, pack, and quack. Just as loud as our little quackers could quack. The cars kept speeding by and honking, and Mrs. Mallet and the ducklings kept right on quack, quack, quack. Oh my. Look at that. They're lucky they don't get hit, aren't they? Look at that big car and that small duckling. 
all at the bottom there. He made such a noise that Michael came running, waving his arms and blowing his whistle. There he is, running along to the street. He planted himself in the center of the road raised one hand to stop the traffic and then beckoned with the other, the way a policeman does, for Mrs. Mallet to cross over. My, that's nice. There he is, he's got his arm up for them to stop and come across. And there are the ducklings coming across the road, all in a line, like their mother had taught them. As soon as Mrs. Mallet and the ducklings were safe on the other side and on the way down Mount Vernon Street, Michael rushed back to his police booth. Rushing back to the police booth. And there are all the buildings. Oh, he was a nice policeman. He called Clancy at headquarters and said, there's a family of ducks walking down the street. Clancy said, family of what? Ducks, yelled Michael. Send a police car, quick. He is agitated and he wants them to hurry. Meanwhile, Mrs. Mallet had reached the corner bookstore and turned into Charles Street with Jack, Knack, Lack, Mac, Mac, Wack, Pack, and Quack all marching in line behind her. <laughs> they are right near the corner bookstore. Everyone stared. An old lady from Beacon Hill said, isn't it amazing? And the man who swept the street said, well, now ain't that nice. And when Mrs. Mallet heard them, she was so proud, she tipped her nose in the air and walked along with an extra swing in her waddle. There they are walking along with mother in front. When they came to the corner of Beacon Street, there was a police car with four policemen and Clancy had sent them from her headquarters. The policemen held back the traffic so Mrs. Mallet and the ducklings could march across the street. You see them marching across the street? right on into the public garden. Oh, they're going right on into the public garden. Inside the gate, they all turned around to say thank you to the policeman and the policeman smiled and waved goodbye. policeman waving goodbye and there are the ducks all there when they reached the pond and swam across to the little island where was there was mr mallard waiting for them just as he had promised there's the little island you see and see the ducks are all swimming across The ducklings lived like the New Highland so much that they decided to live there. And all day long, they followed the swan boats and they ate peanuts. So there's a picture of them following the swan boat 
in the public gardens and there are the pictures of all the plants all around the edge of the, of the water. And when the night falls, they swim to their little island and they go to sleep. There they are, going to the little island to go to sleep at night. And that's the end of the story. I hope you enjoyed it.